Hi, I'm Luke Massey and in this episode for Wex Photographic I'm going to be showing you how I'm using digital SLR camera traps to track down the Iberian lynx. In August it's really really hot in southern Spain so the lynx are mainly moving at night so I'm going to be placing camera traps at kind of convenient spots where there's lynx scat or water holes and we kind of vaguely know that they're moving through those areas so hopefully we're going to track them down and we'll find some suitable spots. So first things first, I need to set up the shot. The reason I set up the shot first just with the camera um, is so I can work out what the framing is. I can adjust the lighting afterwards, but I know where I can put my flashes out of frame, obviously, and the sensor, because that's the worst thing you get, that you set the shot up, or you put those in first, then you set the shot up, and you've got to take it all down and redo it, because you don't want anything almost man-made in the shot. Gear-wise, I'm using a Canon 40D. Um, I turn the image review off and put it on standby after about 30 seconds, so it's pretty much off all the time, so the battery lasts a long time, even with just one battery in there. Um, I'm using a Tamron 11-16, to so it's quite a, like a nice wide shot, and you get kind of this one, the habitat, but also you can't really miss the links coming through, luckily. And on trails like this, obviously, the links is channeled just through this spot, so I can really work on my focusing. I use a Benro tripod, this guy's pretty sturdy and obviously weather, weather conditions and a lynx or a wild boar or anything moving past isn't really going to adjust it. The worst thing you could get is the shot I set up today and I come back in two weeks and the tripod moves slightly and the shot's either really wonky or now a flash is in shot. So you really need a sturdy base for your camera, like anything, almost like landscape photography, time lapse or whatever. So I'm going to set this all up now. Um, then I'll set the flashes up and then I'll start pretending to be a lynx um, to kind of try and work out what will happen in the scenario of a lynx passing and make sure everything's perfect before leaving it because there's nothing worse than setting it all up and then a lynx coming through and the shot going all wrong and for two weeks I don't know what I'm getting and I come back and it's all been a big waste of time. So for the flashes and for the PIR sensor, I'm using cam traptions triggers. They're quite new on the market, but they're perfect. As you can see, this, 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 that's all the kit I need plus my flashes. Whereas before I was using sensors that were kind of one really large, I had to use just three different ones of these just to get the sensor set up and then really large battery packs. They're all powered off AA batteries, which you can get anywhere in the world. Um, these guys, so I've got the transmitter and then receivers for the flashes. So I plug the transmitter into the top of the camera and they're powered off two extra AA batteries. So again, these will last up to two weeks. So pretty much it's all perfect just to set up and go and leave. And I'm pretty confident I'm yet touch wood to have a problem with these guys. Um, whereas when you're using wires, usually you have to solder them. If the soldering comes loose, you lose all connection and then it can go wrong three days into your two week shoot and you don't know anything about that without checking on it. Um, so I set these all up, I set them all onto channel one so that when the camera triggers, or when the sensor triggers, which is the only wired thing, but this wire is quite reliable as well, that I, this is plugged into here and then I, it goes for about six to eight foot. So I can set the uh, sensor up quite a way off. And then when, that, when something triggers past this, I've adapted this as well, I've just, um, taped a milk bottle lid of all things onto the thing and cut a hole in it so the central PAR sensor instead of having a wider beam it just has a single solid beam so I know exactly when or where the animal's going to go I don't know exactly where the animals go but when the animal goes directly past that beam that's when it triggers instead of before or afterwards so the focusing I hopefully can get spot on so what I'm going to do is put all of the receivers onto the flashes so they're pretty much ready to go. These are just old Nikon SB28s and they actually wake up immediately from standby, that's why I'm using them for camera trapping. Um, there's nothing worse than your, cam your flash not waking up on the first shot and usually the first shot is all you've got. Um, so you take a shot and if the flashes don't wake up, obviously the shot's completely dark if it's at night. Whereas on these guys, they wake up immediately like that, get the shot, and you're not missing out on anything at all. So they're all on. And I'll set these up in particular spots, and then we'll go from there. So there's no real kind of direct way of setting this up. Um, I set up the sensor first, just so I know where 
because sometimes it's not the easiest place to put it like you've got to have this is the most important thing to have stable because if the sensor moves then your whole point of where the camera is going to trigger changes so i set this up first simply to think that if the sensor's here for example and the links comes here that's when it triggers so then i can set the flashes up afterwards because obviously if it's triggering here this is where i need the flashes pointing at the links here whereas if i set the flashes up first then i've got to go with where they're now pointing but it doesn't really matter too much it's just the way i do it so i use a gorilla pod simply because you can wrap it round. Um, i mean you could use a tripod exactly the same it's just another thing to carry and sometimes i'm having to go over quite like tough terrain up and down all over the place but for now so i can wrap this round something and then it's obviously got its ball head on top that I can change the point and I'd say I mean now I've done it so many times I can kind of work out exactly where the beam will be going obviously I'll test it as well but there so that's almost at lynx height and if a lynx comes along here it's going to trigger the camera but before I set up all the cameras I'll plug it all in um, with the wire I'm gonna have to undo that and then I'll just quickly just do what a lynx would do to see if it triggers then we'll go on to the flashes so all i'm going to do now is show you hopefully what a lynx should look like walking past here and then we'll be able to see if the sensor's at the right spot and triggers as i come past so this is exactly what an iberian lynx should look like so as you can hear it did trigger um, so that means the sensor's in the right place now i can set up the flashes and we'll go from there so for setting up the flashes, I've actually got these made. Um, they're pretty heavy, but when you're dry, so for air travel, they're not that great, and I can't take that many of them with me. But I've got all these holes drilled in them, a spike made on the bottom, and then a screw top on the top, so I can put ball heads and things on them. Um, sometimes in this, it's good to have kind of like custom gear. Um, you could use tripods as well, but obviously these are a lot smaller, and with the holes, I can strap them onto trees, and they go into pretty much any ground including this one when it hasn't rained for a while it's I mean it's still just coming to the end of summer so it's pretty dry but this goes in and I hit it down a bit more and then I can attach the flashes if there's not a suitable tree branch so obviously this is too flimsy and if I put a flash on it would just simply break off but like over there there's a better spot and I can kind of put it on a solid tree and use the natural surroundings but for some shots that's not always available so I'm going to set this flash here it's out of shot and then hopefully if the link gets in it will really light it light it really nicely and then I'll set the other flash over there to kind of get uh, the other side so it's not completely in shadow on the other side. So I'm going to set these up for now. So now it's time for one last check. I've got the flashes set up, the camera set up, the sensor set up. So all I need to do is just go through, make sure the flashes go off. And then I'll put a memory card in the camera or clear the memory card and make sure it's completely empty. And then hopefully when we come back in two weeks... One, the camera kit will be, still be here. Two, there'll be a picture of a Lynx. Three, hopefully it'll be a good picture of a Lynx. So I'm just going to test it and then we'll do that. So it works. Um, I'll just go at Lynx level and it works again. So now we'll check the memory card and make sure everything's ready to go and head off and leave it to it. So this I'm using a 32 gigabyte card. I mean, that's overkill almost sometimes you even use a 64 gig card but these guys um obviously this could be a really busy animal trail and the worst thing would be is that all your batteries last but your memory card runs out so you want as big as possible really just in case it's unlikely that a lynx is coming down here loads but there could be a sounder of wild boar or a herd of deer or rabbits fox whatever or even just i have sent this set the sensor to be very kind of sensitive and uh, not sensitive so that the wind and shadows and stuff don't trigger it but with this there's no risk of it filling up um, if it did fill up i'd be very surprised i'm going to put that in there uh, just quickly format the card so i know there's nothing else on it we know everything's working so if i come back and press well review and it has that those two words no image i'll be really disappointed but hopefully there'll be images and we know all of those images were taken after we set it up so it's all good to go camera goes on to standby usually i just wait for this to go and stand by the flash is going to stand by and then that's it leave it and hopefully we've got shots happening from 
who knows, could be half an hour after we leave, an hour after we leave, two days after we leave, a week after we leave, but hopefully we'll get some shots. So that's gone on to standby, so fingers crossed. One of the limitations of the project is that the links are on private estates and to get on the private estates at the minute we're having to pay. So where we set up the camera traps, um, although it's fine to pay to set them up, I didn't really want to be paying just to retrieve them. So I got Jose Luis, our friend, to retrieve them. He was able to do it free of charge. So I wasn't able to actually go and see immediately what my camera traps got. But I went and met him and he handed over all the gear and in the 10 days that we had the cameras out, we had success. Um, there was a lot of dogs, strangely, um, from the owner of the state walking past. But the first shot I got was actually a lynx running away from the camera, um, heading past. So I kind of thought, damn it, I had it in the wrong position. But three days later, at 10 o'clock at night, I got this shot. And this is what it's all about. Like, that is the perfect shot of a link well not it's never perfect but that is the shot I imagined so this is just the start over the next three months hopefully as I get cameras putting them out in different areas I'm going to be able to get different shots so the links are completely unpredictable at this time of year so although I know where they are I don't know when they're going to be there so that's why we're relying on camera trapping so much so join me for the next episode when hopefully we're tracked down a links in the flesh